Okay, welcome back to the video regarding integrating factors. So in this one, we're going to start following like we are doing the exact of the ease. We're going to follow the exact same method. Um, and then you'll see what's going to happen if we cannot get them to be exact. So once again, let's identify M and N. So for this one, M will be out of the thing in the parentheses, which will be cosine of omega X plus omega sine of omega x and then n will be e to the x so once again let's test for exactness so we have partial m partial y so we have then the, the partial derivative of y or with respect to y of cosine of omega x plus omega sine of omega x so all of it is just zero because there's no white present so all of that is just zero and then for this one we have partial n partial x so we have to the partial derivative of e to the x with respect to x well for this one we get e to the x and you can see that they are not, they are, this one are not exact, not exact. All right, so what do we do if they're not exact? Well, this is where we, we find our integrating factor and it will be needing to have our other uh, terms. So for this one, we have then that we need to refer, uh, we need to call things a little bit differently. So you see now that M will be now to refer, will be now referred as P and N will now be referred as Q. And we're going to be using the following formulas. We have the F, the, this one F of X equals to the E to the integral of R of X DX, where R of X is given uh, here in blue. So uh, now that we know that, let me just write them here in the bottom, just once again. So then we have here that P is equal to cosine of omega X plus omega times sine of omega X. And I know this one looks like a double W, but it's actually the Greek letter omega lowercase. Then we have Q is equal to E to the X. So we got to do that one in blue, the R of X first. So let's do this one. So we have here then that the R of X, it's equals to one over Q, which will be one over, and let me just put it in color, E to the X times, you can see here it's looking for the partial derivative of P with respect to Y, which it will be technically this one. It's exactly this one. So the derivative is zero. And for this one, partial derivative of Q with respect to X, you know that that one is this one, which is E to the X. So those are, or you can find the partial derivatives again, but why do them because when, since we already know what they are. So partial P, partial Y, that's zero, right? Find the partial derivative. And I'm gonna just write them here, just in case we can see them, partial P, partial Y. You know it's zero and over here we have partial q partial x is equal to e to the x that's for reference so this will be minus e to the x and you can see that then we can rearrange this and the answer for this one it's um uh, will be e to the x negative e to the x over e to the x which will just give us negative one. So let's find the next one. So then f of x will be e to the integral of negative one dx, which will be e to the negative x. And this, my friends, it's what we call that integrating factor. This is all that we need, the integrating factor. 
now this one, what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to multiply this integrating factor times our original equation and then try to find if they are exact now. So let me write it there. So this will have e to the negative x times what was our original equation. It was cosine of omega x plus omega sine of omega x dx and it was plus we have e to the negative x times e to the x dy equals to zero. As you can see we're multiplying the whole integ the integrating factor times the whole equation which will basically modify it and now that it's modified uh, let's just let me just rewrite it. So basically the equation, everything on the left side will be the same. We have e to the negative x. Times, oh, we, uh, we can distribute it. Let me just distribute it real quick. So e to the negative x cosine of omega x plus e to the negative x times omega sine of omega x everything over here times the x and we have here e to the negative x times e to the positive x that's just they're going to cancel out and it's going to be 1 dy equal to 0. So once again we will find we will test for exactness again so let me do that so I will test for exactness so if it, if it will work, if this work, if it actually worked, the integrating factor, then they should be exact now. So we have P, which is all of that in green. So P is equal to E to the negative X cosine omega X plus E to the negative X times omega sine omega X. And we're going to do partial P, partial Y. So we have partial, partial Y of, I'm just going to do this um, quotation marks. That just means that I'm basically copying everything I have here before. So this, I'm just copying everything over here. I want to write it again. And once we take the derivative of all of that, you can see with respect to Y, our partial derivative still comes up to be zero. So, okay, so that one apparently did not change at all. But let's check now for the other term. So Q, we know it now it's just one. So when we take the partial derivative of Q with respect to X, we have partial, partial X of one. And you can see that the derivative of one with respect to X is zero. So when you look at that, now we have both of them, they are the same they have become exact after doing the integrating factor. And this is basically how it works. You can see, just repeat real quick. We started at the beginning. We saw that our equations, they were not exact. So since they're not exact, we will look for an integrating factor. We, we changed M to P and N to Q. Uh, we basically used that equation R of X. We found out whatever r of x it was, in this case negative 1. We plug that in into our f of x equation. That was our integrating factor. And then we multiply the integrating factor times the whole original equation. We got our new equation. And then we test it for exactness once more with the new terms p and q. And then our terms are now exact. And now that these are exact, this is basically where we stop our problem, if if we are tasked to do, to continue solving, we can solve now like we did before, you know, solve, continue solving for you and all of that. But at least for this problem, I'm going to stop on this one uh, here. And let's see, I think we have another problem and let's look at it. Okay, so this is another problem in which we need to find, um, we need to test for exactness first. And then if they are not exact, we need to find our integrating factor. So once again, let's start first step, you know, it's to find M. 
So in this case, m is equals to x to the fourth plus y square, and n is equals to negative x y. You can see it has to it needs to get that negative also in there. Uh, so if we do the partial m partial y, then it's just partial partial y, and we need to take the partial derivative of x to the fourth plus y squared with respect to y. And since x to the fourth will be treated as a constant, it will basically go to zero. And the only one that we're left with will be the derivative of y squared, which is 2y. We do the same thing for the n. So partial derivative of n with respect to x. And then we have partial partial x of negative xy. And in this case, y is treated as a constant, so the partial derivative of this will just be negative y, since the, the derivative of x is just 1. So you can see right away that these ones are not exact. They are not exact. And therefore, we need to find an integrating factor. So then we, this is where we know then that m will be labeled as p, and where n will be labeled as q moving on so remember the formula we need to find r so r of x is equal to 1 over q times partial p partial y minus partial q partial x and basically 1 over q we already know that that's uh, 1 over in this case q we said it was negative x y times partial p partial y we said that this one is the same thing as this one so that will be 2 y minus partial q partial x which is this one which will be in this case negative y So from here, we're going to get um, 1 over negative xy times 2y minus minus y. That will be 3y. The y's will cancel out. And we're going to get negative 3 over x. And then we're going to use this value to apply into our f of x, which is the e integral of r of x dx, so this will be e integral of negative 3 over x dx. So we can do this one, and we can factor out the negative 3, and then we're going to have equal to e to negative 3 ln of x, right, because we can factor out the negative 3, and then 1 over x will be uh, let me just write it here so you can see integral of 1 over x dx which will be e to the negative 3 natural log of x we, in order to cancel we need to do e ln x to the negative 3 and this is where we can cancel now the natural log because we're going to have an, an exponent in front of it so this is where we have then that our integrating factor it's just x to the negative 3. And this is our integrating factor. So now we need to multiply that times our original equation, which is everything here in black. I'm just going to copy and paste it to save ourselves some time. So this is our original equation, so we multiply it times x to the negative 3. And over here, times as well to x to the negative 3. I'm going to put it in there, but in front of the negative. And then our equation will now become, if we distribute, we're going to have x minus plus y squared x to the negative 3 dx minus, um, this will be 
x to a negative 2, y dy equals to 0. That's our new equation. So let's find our new p's. So p in this case will be now x plus y squared x to the negative 3. And then we have now a uh, new q, which is negative x to the negative 2 y. So if we did this correctly, then we can find the integrating, I mean, the partial derivative of each one of them. So let's look for that. So partial p, partial y, we have uh, then the partial derivative of all of that, which is x plus y squared x to the negative 3. So once again, the partial derivative of x with respect to y is 0. And then for y squared, uh, well, the only one that we have here, the y squared, because x to the negative 3 is 3 as a constant, so we'll get 2y x to the negative 3. Now for q, we have partial q, partial x, which is partial, partial of negative x to negative 2 uh, y. So in this case, uh, since we're integrating with respect, de deriving with respect to x, uh, we're going to that 2 basically comes to the front, which is going to become positive, and we take 1, we subtract 1, so that will be 2y, um, I mean, yeah, 2y, and then the y just passing through, and then the x will be to the negative 3, right? The y just passes along. And when you look at that, we have the same terms. So then we know that they are exact now. So you can see in this was examples. Once again, this is <clears throat> test for exactness and find an applying an integrating factor. So you can see this problem is not difficult at all. And this is basically where we would stop. So that is it. And as always, good luck.